If you've been following the news lately, there's been a lot of back and forth about the new AHA cholesterol guidelines. There's been a ton of controversy and confusion, so here's a quick summary of what the guidelines actually are, how they work, and what the controversy is all about. So the first thing to note is that these guidelines are all about statins, and statins are a class of drugs that have been very successful at lowering people's cholesterol, specifically their LDL cholesterol thereby preventing people from developing cardiovascular disease. So these guidelines are really all about who should be getting statins, when they should get statins, and how they should get statins. So what was wrong with the old guidelines? Well, the first thing is the old guidelines very much use statins as a way to treat LDL, to bring someone's LDL level under a certain level. And while that is important, statins do a lot more than just treat LDL. They're involved in downstream pathways that affect inflammation and protein prenylation, and actually those, those pathways are very important in reducing someone's risk for developing cardiovascular disease. So if we're just looking at LDL, we're not looking at the big picture of what statins really do. Secondly, the old guidelines were based on the Framingham study, which was overwhelmingly based on white males. African Americans and women, for example, have different risk factors for developing cardiovascular disease, and those risk factors aren't completely encompassed by just looking at LDL alone. Lastly, the old cutoffs weren't based on great randomized control trial data. There were a lot of studies that compare LDL levels between different groups of people, and preventive guidelines and cutoffs were extrapolated from that data but we didn't have a lot of randomized controlled trial data to support the cutoffs and targets that were being used. So what are the new AHA guidelines? Well, there are basically four groups of people that are now recommended to receive statins. The first group is anyone with an LDL at or above 190. Now that's pretty obvious. These patients would require a high dose statin and the goal would be to reduce their LDL by greater than 50%. The second group is anyone with diabetes between the age of 40 and 75 with an LDL at or above 70. These patients would require a moderate dose statin and the goal would be to reduce their LDL by 30 to 50 percent. The third group is anyone with current or past cardiovascular disease with an LDL at or above 70. So cardiovascular disease could be anything from a past heart attack to stroke, uh, to claudication, peripheral vascular disease, or even just angina. These patients would require a high dose statin and the goal would be to reduce LDL by greater than 50%. Now the fourth group, this is the group with the most controversy surrounding it. This is anyone with a 7.5 or greater percent chance of developing cardiovascular disease sometime in the next 10 years. Between the age of 40 to 75, with an LDL at or above 70, these patients would require a moderate dose statin with the goal of reducing LDL by 30 to 50 percent. So you might ask, how do we know what any given person's percent chance of developing cardiovascular disease in the next 10 years is? Well, for that, the AHA released a new risk calculator that calculates that. So the risk calculator, which you can download at the bottom of the screen, um, is essentially just an Excel document where you put in some data and it calculates a patient's risk of developing cardiovascular disease in the next 10 years. It's based on nine factors. It's based on a patient's sex, age, race, and the options are either black or non-black, total cholesterol, HDL, systolic blood pressure, whether or not they're currently being treated for blood pressure, whether or not they're diabetic, and whether or not they smoke. So you put in that information and the risk calculator will calculate their 10-year and lifetime risk for developing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So which statins does this, do these new guidelines recommend? Well, for high-dose statins, uh, the guidelines recommend either atorvastatin, 40 to 80 milligrams, or rosuvastatin, 20 to 40 milligrams. Now for moderate dose, there's a lot more options. Atorvastatin, 10 to 20 milligrams, Rosuvastatin, 5 to 10 milligrams, Pravastatin, 40 to 80 milligrams, Simvastatin, 20 to 40 milligrams, Lovastatin, 40 milligrams, or Fluvastatin, 40 to 80 milligrams. So what are the new goals? Well, here might be the most important point about the new guidelines, and that's that there are no longer any target LDL levels. We're not trying to get everybody's LDL level to a certain number or under a certain target. 
Rather, we are only trying to reduce by certain percentages. So as we saw before, the goal might be a 50% reduction or 30% reduction, but we're not trying to get everyone to the same number anymore. And lastly, what is all the controversy about? Well, most of the controversy has to do with the risk calculator. It's based on a lot of good data. However, it has never been used clinically before. So to put a new calculator out into the public, uh, we just don't know what's going to happen. So that's, that's controversial. Secondly, people estimate that using these new guidelines, the amount of people taking statins could double. So a lot of people think, well, this could be easily be a throwaway to the pharmaceutical industry who stands to make a ton of money. Well, the truth is most of these drugs are at this point generic, so not that many people stand to make a lot of money from statins. However, there is a point to say that, you know, a lot of people will be treated using statins when they don't actually have any clinical or apparent disease. However, we will be exposing these patients to the side effects of statins, which are very real, which could be include things like muscle weakness or liver damage. So that's controversial. Secondly, or thirdly, a group of Harvard doctors have estimated or assert that this calculator is actually overestimating a patient's risk for developing cardiovascular disease. So you might put in the data and the calculator will say this patient has a 50% chance of developing cardiovascular disease, but the truth might be something a lot lower than that. The second kind of category of controversy is that with these guidelines, a lot of the shared decision making between physicians and patients is removed. Um, First of all, will patients be compliant to take statins when they don't actually have any clinical disease? That's questionable. Second of all, what if a patient is motivated to change their lifestyle, to change their diet, or to exercise more? Maybe they don't need statins. So to, for, to, to encourage those patients to take statins before they have clinical disease when they're motivated to change their lifestyle, well, maybe that's not the best route. So a lot of doctors essentially say that some of these patients should be managed on a case-by-case -case basis. So putting everyone into these categories might not be the best way to deal with patients who are very diverse with different levels of motivation and different family histories. So that's kind of a summary of everything. And uh, you can download the original document below uh, that was released by the AHA. And also there are some links to some of the controversy and some of the differing opinions about these new guidelines. Thank you.